All right, you are on with Maya on Talkie Hand. That's Talkie Tidbits, I guess I should call it now, because since I changed the name and everything, um, since these are all recordings now. But, yeah, you might notice that I kind of sound a little out of breath, because I just, I just enjoyed a serious dancing jam, too. Hello, world. You'll get the drift if you're a major Zedekin, you know, no fun. Um, yeah. So anyway, today is talking to this number nine, and this might be a bit more specifically fangirlish of me to delve into, but I'm excited to nonetheless. So let's get started. Well, what's today's topic? My personal thoughts and insights on Project Cunigo, aka Project 95. Bye. Can you talk to that? I mean, I said, okay, seriously. So let's say that thanks to a good friend of mine, I was able to view the film earlier this week, and since then, I've listened to it two times on my MP3. I normally have my headphones on me more than a screen, so hence the MP3 listening sessions. But the main deal here is, wow, just wow. I mean, where do I even begin? The whole film is just my learning. I mean, let me just tell you, dear listeners, I do not normally watch a lot of movies. I mean, I have seen a lot over the years, but I wouldn't say that a ton of them are my absolute favorite, right? But this movie, this movie just had my heart beating, had me on the edge of my seat, had me fearing for my life, I guess. I don't know. I just, it'll, it, it provoked so many thoughts and feelings. Um, there was mystery. There was shock. There was fright. There was action. There was really just insightful and wow. Okay, so I'm a bit of a novice for those of you who may have actually seen the film more. And I will admit, Japanese is my second language, but I am still self-studying it. So I'm gradually understanding more and more of what is actually being said in Project 925. Um, but here's the thing. I don't mind listening to it over and over to say, understand what another word means. Like, you know, realizing that what the characters were saying was actually naughty, you know, or understanding, you know, what Captain Silver said at one point, like, uh, uh, none of me and I got, you know, I mean, Sometimes that stuff I don't hear the first time around that I hear the film or watch it, but I listen to it over and over, I start to pick out parts of the conversation. And I feel this is a good practice anyway for my listening focus on the Japanese language. But anyway, I kind of already had an idea of what it's about because if you've been to my blog, and it's okay if you haven't, I'm going to link um, to those in the description below. But, I have been to the Project 925 site several times in the past because I translated the page that tells the story, that describes the characters a little, that describes the DVD warning, the, the package warning, you know, about how it's going to have bloodshed scenes and fear and blah, blah, and yada, yada. But, so I basically, I mastered that part, understanding the broader context of the movie, and that's what I really wanted to do anyway, but seeing the movie and just knowing the music that it's represented, Hello World, Algorithm, Genshi Bango no uh, uh, Yonju Nana, um, Koi no Deterashi Dacha, and uh, Ori Soshite Hajimare no Ota, those are songs that have grown very close to my heart over the last couple of years, and just seeing them in the context of that film I tell you, that was mind-blowing. I mean, that's just another thing that got me really grinning the whole time, like for the rest of the week up till now when I'm talking about this. Okay, so some ideas I have. Well, I'm not sure where to start, and if you have a better understanding, you can correct me as needed, but these are just my novice-based fan theories, I guess, because when I'm really gung-ho about something, you can bet I'm going to want to create some kind of a personal theory on how it works. So, one thing I noticed is that, okay, so it seems like there's five main characters, I guess, that's what the site lists, you know, 
Captain Silver, the detective, Sheena, Kun, um, Al, and Q. But then there's also another character in the movie, and I did kind of get an idea of this character based on some of the fan art that an artist in Sepulchre, uh Ray, has done on, on Project 95. Um, so there's another character, a homeless person. And one thing I've noticed, there are just so many parallels between these seemingly distinct, different characters. Okay, so like the opening scene, how it starts with Captain Silver, how he's shouting like, noise, 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 you know, and trying to, to stop the radio from playing or whatever. And then he has those, um, at, at one point, I think, like he has like these meds at one point. The story got interesting at that point. The story got really interesting at that point where he had these like white, pills and I and he ate them and this is one thing I really like about the film how the sound quality I mean I was listening to this film on my mp3 and I could tell exactly when he was chewing those pills I mean that sound effect is awesome but another thing like when he gets so tired of telling himself about the noise and and how everything's gonna be fine I think based on what he says it sounds like he's saying Jozu um and then, then comes the kind of gory part that I guess you would expect based on the film's warning, like the part where he takes out the knife and there's a little self-harm on his wrist there, you know. Let's just say I kind of have an idea about how that goes, if you get my drift. But I notice that later on when the te- detective is investigating these kidnappings, this crime, you know, he does the same actions that Captain Silver does. I mean, think about it. He also, the detective also had those white meds, um, those white pills, whatever they were. Um, he also, um, reacted dramatically, I guess you could call it, since the film, to the noise, because he also has that scene where he's like, noise, 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 you know, they both have those scenes. And then he has the blood letting scene, I guess you could call it, with the knife. And that's interesting. And that kind of cemented in me, maybe... Maybe since the detective is like this heavy smoker, drinker type of person, maybe he's not remembering everything. So maybe there was a point, this is just a theory, be warned. Maybe there's a point where he was like actually being Captain Silver in a way because of their similar actions. Because remember later on when the detective goes to look at the film of what Captain Silver apparently did to that uh, kidnapped victim, we notice that the the camcorder later shows it's the detective in that video, not Captain Silver. So it's like, is Captain Silver even a real person, or is he just a figment of the detective's imagination? But this is where it even gets more interesting, because near the end of the film, when Shinakun is giving the detective that coin, he has the same cuts in the same place. On his left wrist, the, the bottom side, I guess you would call it, the underside of his left wrist. He has the same marks that Captain Silver and the detective had, and that fascinates me, because it signifies to me, what if they are the same person? And then the detective has a flashback where the person who handed them, where the person who handed him, the detective, those papers about the kidnapping, the pictures of the suspects, like Captain Silver, all that, the detective has a flashback where it turns out the person who gave him the stuff was a Shinakun. And then this is the interesting part also, when the song Owari Soshita Hajimari no Ta is beginning, and I really like the soft version it has. Now I'm starting to wonder if the version I've listened to on YouTube is just like a remix, but I really like both versions either way. But when the detective goes to stab Shinakun in the... um lower part of the chest, I guess. I, I don't know the proper anatomy term for it, but, you know, when he when the detective stabs Sheena, he, the detective, ends up also stabbed. It's like, how is that possible? Because Sheena was not carrying a knife. The detective was. So it's like, it serves to me like maybe, and plus since Sheena Kun says that, you know, basically this is his room, the, the detective's room, I guess, and they talk about us, you know, book touchy. It just makes me wonder, what if this is all just one person? And then, and then that 
one statement that really hit me hard in my personal thoughts and curiosities. That one statement, Honto no kimi wa homeless. The real you is homeless. The real, the real Honto. So it made me wonder, especially since the end of the film shows the homeless character, you know, drinking and getting drunk and throwing up on the side, and they flash back to a scene where the detective was doing the exact same, you know, that flashback near the end of the film, and that fascinates me. And the homeless person also is stabbed in the side like that. But there's these, like, other guys who come and, like, spray some, who who come and uh, pour some, I don't know, what is it, like the kerosene or whatever it might be, you know, and then... When the homeless person lights a match for a cigarette, he drops it, and we're led to believe he catches on fire and dies. Because that's how it ends with the detective and all those. Because once the detective, after confronting Shinakun, also drops dead, we, 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 we are led to believe we learn very quickly those bags of bodies that were behind him, they are actually the bodies of all those other characters. Al, Q... Uh, Captain Zora, I will admit, my heart jumped when I saw her part, because I was like, holy cow, because honestly, up until this point, I kind of thought that maybe Captain Silver was the culprit behind all those kidnappings, I mean, he just, he seemed the part so much, but I will admit, I did see a fan art by Ray on Twitter that indicated the homeless person being entangled in that silver, that, that sterling silver item, I'm not sure what it is still, maybe like some kind of seating or chain, but the chain that's on the cover of Project 925, I saw an artwork by Ray that was basically, um, you know, he was in those chains and Sheena was behind that homeless person, so then after that, I started wondering, maybe it's Sheena, but then after seeing this film, I'm just so curious, I'm confused, but I'm curious, and as you can see, I've been kind of rambling on for a couple moments about this, but that is how excited I am to further listen and listen and listen and listen to this film over and over again, because I'm just so curious, I'm just so curious about where it leads to, and now that I think about it, I think it serves as a metaphor for films in general, I mean, I think about it right now, I think that, like, if I were to discuss certain films with people, they might find them controversial, because of the very maybe dark topics they delve into but at the same time it's like I don't know it's like maybe they're controversial because they cover topics people don't want to discuss openly but at the same time they feel maybe there's a truth to I don't know that's kind of interesting seriously I want I just want to say like when I started listening to songs like koi no ritelushi datcha I just wondered what in the heck would people think if they knew I listened to this kind of song? Because, I mean, on the surface, see, that's the thing, on the surface, this kind of music sounds crazy, this kind of film seems crazy, but I think if you're a really insightful person at heart, you will look past the obvious and not look for the obvious. You look for the hidden meaning. That's what I really like about this film. I think it touches base on a lot of things, because the other day, I was looking for Project 95 on Amazon, and... Someone left a review in Japanese that basically translated to what I believe must have been said by Tsuda, I guess. Something about how he tried to express what was in his head, and then that led to a revelation for me. What if this whole film, all those so so starkly different characters, what if they represent the different parts of our minds? You know, like we have this logical side, you know, represented by Al this kind of dorky, kooky side represented by Q, this really crazy, just out of nowhere, just really wild side represented by Captain Silver, this really gloomy, um, uh, melancholy self represented by Shinakun, and then this constantly curious, but maybe kind of half aware of things, kind of wandering self represented by the detective. I just, all these different characters could represent different parts of the mind, and I think that if you only look at the film at face value, like, oh, it's about these creepy people, and it's about, like, these, these like, bloody scenes, it's like, you're not going to get that. But I think if you really look, because I think of it this way, movies are a kind of art. They are made to tell a story. They are made to express ideas, just like a drawing or a comic book. You know, there are stories, evidently, on the surface, but me as a writer and an artist myself, I recognize 
there is always more to be told than what is obvious, what is on the surface. You have to look past the surface. And I think for the me, that's what this film has really done. And I know I've been rambling a bit. <laughs> I'm sorry if I drained you. I'm sorry if I tired your ear and having to listen to all this, if you listen to it. I don't know. I just like making me to talk about things that I'm excited about. But um, so that basically wraps it up for my theories. And then, oh, yeah, that reminds me of one thing. Now I'm starting to wonder, the homeless character, all those other characters, like Al and Q and Shina Kun and the detective and Captain Silver, were those all figments within the homeless person's imagination if he still ended up dead? But then, I don't know, because see, every time I think I have a theory about this movie, there's something else in the film that makes me question that theory and gives me more questions. Like, I could go with that theory, but Shina Kun is the one who talks last at the end of the film. So I don't know. But I really, really like this film. And I think if you look past it, I think if you look, not look past it, no. That's not what I meant. I think if you look deeply into what its metaphors and its inner meanings are, I think this can be a film that really makes you think a lot. And I think that's really important because there was this quote I saw before where some someone once said, I can't remember his name, but someone once said that the books, that help you the most are the books that make you think the most. So, I think you can apply the same to movies. The movies that help you the most are the ones that make you think the most. And so far, that is why Project 925 is currently my top favorite movie right now. Possibly for a while, because I have loved those songs for a, a, a while now, almost four years. And it's just, I love knowing the broader context that those songs are played in, and now thinking about the story, and see... The movie is really helping me think a lot about life, about meaning of life, about our thoughts, about our minds. So that's why I really think it's an awesome, an awesome film. Film. So <laughs> this is kind of basically wrapping up my review for it. But I'll be sure to keep keep you listeners updated um, if I come up with any ideas um, along the way. So yeah. Till then, talkie tidbits out and Maya, the ultimate fangirl, well of 95, <laughs> out. <laughs>